Hello everyone and welcome to another Roaring Records tutorial. My name is Dr. Andy Edwards and I am back with a Logic 10.8 tutorial. This is a little different than maybe some of my other tutorials that you've seen. This one is not necessarily about helping you make music, but about helping you save space on your computer with your Logic files. And I'll show you what I mean right now. So this is a logic project that I have just set up today. And here's the thing. This is a very, very big project. If you scroll down through here, you'll see that I have a full woodwind section, a full trumpet section, um, a full violin section, um, and rhythm section, and all the drum set parts, and everything. So this was recorded um, off of a soundboard in a recent concert that we did. So it's all the individual tracks. Now at the top, my ruler is on and you'll notice that this is an hour and a half long wave files, 32 bit, 48 K wave files. Those are big files. So each one of them is like 1.1 gigs. And all I need for what I'm going to do right now is this little part right here where the marker is for that and this little part right here where the marker is for that. All the rest of this is not really necessary for what I'm going to do with this project. So I'm going to show you how to get rid of the extra parts because you know if you could just get in here and be like hey I'm going to split this at the playhead and I'm going to split this at the playhead and then delete these boom boom whatever right. But the problem is that file is not any shorter on the computer because it is all still 100% there when you go to stretch it out. So here's what you need to do if you want to go about making this happen a little differently. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to set my cycle to match my markers. So all I'm doing is a click and drag right there on the measure bar line, the primary ruler. And then I'm going to select all on my computer. So that's command A and right click and split this at the locators. Now you'll notice that it just cut that at the beginning and end of that cycle region. Now I need to do that one more time out here at the other section that I need. And that goes from here all the way out to here. And once again, I'm going to select all and split at locators. So now if I scroll across through, I should have splits at all the right places, getting out, split, split. Good. Now I'm going to zoom out on my computer. By the way, if you're wondering how I zoom so quickly, I'm using a tour box and I really love this tour box elite pro for all sorts of different shortcuts and stuff. Very quick, very easy. Now I'm going to shrink up my files as well. And now all I'm going to do is get rid of delete, simply pressing the delete key here, all of the stuff that I don't want. You're like, what? No difference yet. You're right. There is no difference yet for what I've done. And for the purposes of this project, I'm going to go ahead and slide everything back to the beginning. That means I need to take my locator to the beginning as well. Just the marker just shows what's what and keeps it sane in my head getting rid of the extra markers and I'll do the same thing with all these out here. Get them a little bit closer. So now this file technically only has like mm, 10 minutes of length in it. And if you don't want to see all that extra space, you can come out here to the end, take your little triangle marker that's up there at the top, slide it back. And now whenever you adjust the size of your zoom, it'll be right there. Okay. So now you've taken everything down to just this. Now I want to show you something right here in the 
uh, tab right here called media. When you open that, you'll see your project information. Now, originally, this was all gigantic one files that read that they were an hour and 36 minutes long. When we made the cuts, it broke it up into little pieces, but it's all still looking at the original WAV file name. It's just showing you how it's cut it into little pieces. <clears throat> but they're still massive files. So now what I'm going to do is select all. Again, that was Command A. I'm going to right click and come down to convert. And I'm going to convert this to new audio files. So again, that's select all. You'll see that everything, whoop, except the kick line didn't get selected for some reason. That's unusual for select all. So select all, everything selected, right click, come down to convert to new audio files. So now it's gonna ask me where I want to put those new audio files. And I actually always like to put a new folder called converted audio in the audio file and hit save. Now it's gonna go through the process of chunking all of these individual uh, pieces into their new files, which is going to take a few seconds, minutes to convert. Because like I said, remember these were hour and a half long WAV files each. So we're talking 1.1 gigs for every track that you saw in this project. And there are lots and lots of tracks by the time you get done. I think something in the neighborhood of 80 tracks. So this one logic project is taking up 80 gigs on my computer right now. That is a lot of space and probably not what you really want to do with uh, your time and energy as you go through your project. We'll fill up your computer fast and you will get very frustrated. So we're just going to wait. Okay, so that whole process for me took about two minutes of time on my computer. So um, one of the great things is immediately after it was done, it went ahead and renamed everything and matched the color system to my already pre-made label system, which is nice. So now I can see where my drum set parts are, my rhythm set parts are, strings, brass, woodwinds, and at the bottom I have choir parts and vocal parts um, for what we're doing. So all of those in my all files pro or my project media files over here are aptly color coded, which means everything that's above and you see the old little chunks of stuff is the previous file. One thing I'm going to show you first is if I go in my logic file and I look at this right now, I've got all those big files, remember 1.1 gigabytes, and I've got now a brand new set of converted files, which are only roughly 54 to 44 uh, megs, so a lot smaller. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna select the top most one and scroll all the way down to the end of my cut and clipped sections, hold shift, select it all, then it shows me I have 85 files selected, come to edit and delete, boom. Now all of those files are gone. All I'm left with are the smaller converted files. That's very handy. When I go back and look in my finder then at my project, oh no, they're still all there, which is kind of a bummer, but you can just shift select now and move those to the trash. Now, all of my files are the converted files, <clears throat> which are smaller, and this project just got much more manageable for my computer. So, we are now set and ready to start working with appropriately sized files, and then make sure you do go back in and save <clears throat> those changes, because that's really important. So, I have just taken this 80, gig file and converted it down to something that's probably a little over one gig in uh, nature. So I can set and ready to begin mixing when I'm ready. So I hope this helped. 
Um, if you've got a lot of logic files that are clogging up your computer, might want to be something you try um, in order to help free up some space and do some other things. If you felt like this was helpful, feel free to like and subscribe. Have a great day.